What's up, everybody? I hope you're doing well this week. I am your host, James Autumn, and this is Nemesis Insider, the premier talk show where we talk to your favorite creators on Team Nemesis. You know, um, I'm alone this week. My my uh, good co-host, Pally, seems to have stubbed his toe and fallen into a black hole abyss. Let's <laughs> wish him the best. Send prayers to his Twitter. Let him know that we're thinking of him, that we miss him dearly. Otherwise, we have a great guest tonight who is a content creator for Nemesis and a man who wears many amazing hats in his personal life. So <laughs> let's give it up for It's Just Dot, but we're going to call him Dot for short. Yeah, Welcome, just call Dot. me Dot. How are we doing? How are we doing? Uh, Glad to be we... here. It's first time here. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet all you guys, see all you amazing faces. Yeah. So like, hey, there's my logo. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you don't know how long it took me to learn that before I found out that I can just get like a nice OBS plugin for that. So yeah, uh, <laughs> I like it. I like it. That's what happens when you don't Google, folks. If you just Google what you want, usually you'll find it. That's hundred percent. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. But Dot, this is your opportunity at the start of the show to basically tell everybody who you are. And uh, the floor is yours to, you know, do a little self-promotion here. Uh, well, sure. Uh, so um, as you can see, my name is Dot. Um, I've been a content creator for the better part of three years now. We just hit my third year on the 14th of this month, uh, which also happens to be my birthday. Toot, toot. Um, I'll say that my journey on Twitch has been a dedicated one. I've, I've uh, never jumped ship up until recently. Um, but I'm a dedicated streamer. I stream four to five days a week, every single week. I post content twice, three times a week. Um, I am a full-time graphic designer and a father. Um, I own my own graphic design business. So that's what I do for my, like my quote unquote nine to five. That's what keeps the food on the table and keeps these, all these RGB lights on. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I will say that it's, it's definitely a passion for me to create and be involved with creators. Um, I play all kinds of games. I'm not like that one guy that just plays the one game. You could watch me playing COD. I'll play Pummel Party. I'll play Fall Guys, you know, uh, gen genuinely I'm using some, uh, we'll call it sailor's language. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, I swear like it's a bad habit, but I believe in being expressive and sometimes you just gotta say <laughs> so <laughs> right right <laughs> um outside of that i'm really just an open book man um i'm here to kind of just network meet some new people learn about more what nemesis fam is and kind of you know answer some questions that you guys got for me and try not to make a fool of myself yeah and that's where we're gonna rely heavily on you guys too is like if you got any questions throw them in the chat we are going to read them and dot is just under contractual obligation to answer them no matter how uncomfortable he gets like that's, that's yeah just no, it. I'm, uh it was it's that or my unborn child so i didn't have much of a choice yeah um, so like <laughs> hands are tied i'm telling y'all telling y'all <laughs> so dot tell me tell me your gaming preferences you know for, for those out there wh what are you into so I play everything from Call of Duty, Fortnite, Rainbow Six, Ready or Not, Diablo. I'm a huge Diablo head. World of Warcraft, New World. Um, I play racing simulators. I play um, Rocket League. Um, Sons of the Forest has been a new thing. I have played Seven Days to Die when I like to hate myself. I'm going <laughs> to be getting into GTA RP because I also Ooh. hate myself. Um, Forza 5 is definitely a, um, a, a big player. A little bit of Phasmophobia, Sea of Thieves, Snow Runner. Like, I play all kinds of stuff, and I'm making a comeback to CSGO. I haven't played CS since it was CS 1.6, so it's been, a, it's been a long time, but I'll be making my official comeback. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to, to that, um, coming into the next coming weeks. Fantastic. So sons of the forest though, I got to ask, you know, like what, what makes it, you know, the, the, the sequel to the original, like what makes it so much better? 
Oh, dude, it just runs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big part. So, the original <laughs> forest crashed on me more than I could play the game. Um, <laughs> um, but also, like, not for nothing, like, it's beautiful. They did a really good job with the with the post production and the graphics. Um, they're already updating it regularly, so that's definitely something that I like to see. Um, if you want, by the way, you could just hit the transfer button and flip it, so I'm facing you rather than facing away from you. Just yeah, for I thought, thought about that. Um, also, uh, <laughs> the the um, uh, Sons of the Forest. Uh, the graphics are a lot better. The story is a little more open, and I like that it's more of an open concept. It definitely makes it so when you're in the game, it's a lot more um, comfortable. And the building aspect is crazy. Um, I think like the different little things you can do and you can, I, I just found out recently, just, like you get like a book where you can like do all the creations that are inside the book. You can defer from that and make your own like custom things within reason. Um, like for example, I made a ramp house. <laughs> so if they try to get in, they just walk over and over. They can't get in. So <laughs> it's a glitch in the game where they can't dig. They can only climb and jump and swing, but they can't swing at something they walk on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Ramp house. Remember that. Uh <laughs> yeah, that was the biggest problem I had with like the original game was like, no matter the defenses, they always found a way around it. They would always like somehow just rocket ship their way up a wall right over past the spike traps and everything and like there was never a way me and my group could ever keep like the big hordes out the biggest thing that i found with like keeping the hordes out um make repeated traps um so you can't just make one wall or one spike trap and then a wall and then expect it to hold anything back you have to like set spears up and then a wall and then spike traps and then another wall and then set like two or three layers of spike traps and like lines surrounding your like perimeter and then you build up another wall and then you have your defenses right so then you can obviously see up and high enough to like get to your enemy but so it would take them so long to get to you that you'll get them before they they even get to you you just it's it's just the law of time like they have to get through these trials to get to me so even if I'm reloading, run out of bullets, or I need to go scavenge for something, I either have time to run away or, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> or kill them if I can, you know, club them to death if I have to. <laughs> uh, I will say the weapons in Sons of the Forest are crazy. Um, they have some really cool guns. Uh, well, guns, weapons, uh, stun, stunning batons. Stunning batons, like, wow. Yeah, like it's a, it's a taser baton, and if you charge it and hit them, they get yeeted. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of yeet the zombies. It's uh, it's crazy. Also, they have uh, some very interesting designs for the zombies this year. I don't know who made. I don't know if you could say body parts on this uh, podcast, but it's the uh, female reproductive organ oh. that has teeth and oh. legs. That's pretty much what it is. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like from the bottom to the top, like it's just like a big like it's like flaps. Um, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> write this down. Cannot stream Sons of Forest on Nemesis channel. Got it. Okay, yeah, no, I strongly, you know, be <laughs> keep that keep that in mind <laughs> for sure. So, so Dot, we were talking about a game before we uh, started streaming that you know I I feel like it's appropriate timing. I, I need your hot take on the Resident Evil Four remake. Okay, a lot of people aren't going to like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Resident Evil 4 is a great game. For those of you who have played the whole series or have played it multiple times, I implore you that it's it's an amazing game to play. To me, if I'm going to play a remastered game, I expect it to be a little bit more than what they gave me. Um, and it was for that reason that I'm out. <laughs> So um, what were some of the I, mechanics or or was it the graphics that were a turn off? What were the turn offs? Well, well, I can't necessarily say it was graphics or mechanics because the graphics were great and the mechanics were great. It's just it's there's nothing different. Like even in Resident Evil 3, the remake, they added in newer material. Okay. So they didn't add anything in, at least thus far that I've seen to the game. 
And I feel like that kind of takes away from the value of the game, no? Like, I feel like that just kind of like, it puts you in this weird position where you're like, I'm just replaying a game that I played. And I played, you know, you know, you don't just play Resident Evil once either. You sit there and you play it a few times, a bunch of different difficulties. Now, is it to say that there's not going to be new things? No, but as of right now, it's just not crazy um, inviting to me right now, personally, as a Resident Evil head. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. And uh, Solo wants us to broaden this out. Obviously, from the short time that I've had to talk with you before stream and everything, mm -hmm. you don't mind sharing what's on your mind. So what no. is your hottest take on any piece of media was Sensei <laughs> Solo's question. Like, what, what was the most <laughs> heated thing you've said? <laughs> you know, a lot of people are going to get pissed at this one. <laughs> god of war should have won game of the year <laughs> oh god okay 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 let's let's have it let's have it come on we did a panel for the game awards and we were thrilled elden ring one sir all right go elden on. ring should not have been game of the year by any fucking stretch mm -hmm. oh here we go <laughs> okay come on elden ring is just dark souls with fucking ray tracing i played enough dark souls to literally sink a continent i had over two thousand hours of dark souls right <laughs> collectively it's just dark souls it's not that great was it a great developmental game yes was it fun yes game of the year absolutely not <laughs> so what do you feel god of made War. Yeah, what, what do you feel okay. like would made God of War that game of the year? What what makes it stand out against well, Elden Ring? Let's take a look at every other category that God of War won because let's 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 kind of narrow this down. They won production, okay. they won most inviting game, mm -hmm. best soundtrack, most played game, most downloaded game in a twenty four hour period. Need I go on? You know, I'm surprised about the most downloaded that it wasn't like Call of Duty or some shit. Cause like, no, Call, Call of Duty, Duty. What's crazy is it, Call of Duty didn't even scratch the surface. Right? <laughs> didn't even. I'm like, yeah, I'm a big Call of Duty fan, but I, I just I can't with Activision anymore. They just they need to, they need to do something. I like set the building on fire. Maybe that'll do it. I don't know. But <laughs> they need to do something. Yeah, but uh, I'll uh, yeah, no. Um, if it wouldn't in... be God of War, I can't, I'm trying to remember the other game, um, that I feel should have also gotten game of the year, and it didn't. It's literally my hold on. What was the one game? What was it like? Um, like it wasn't Slimer, it was like Puggle or something that got like a huge award that like crazed people. It was like this, like a mini game almost. I can't remember. And it had it had Elden Ring in the in the in the nominees. I'm trying to remember it, but it was some like low tier game that was basically like bejeweled. And I'm like, there's no way this game's going to win. And it won. I lost my mind when I watched, like, I was live watching it. And when I, I literally, I think I still have the clip. I literally jumped out of my chair and said, what the sh <laughs> like, I'm going nuts, like trying to figure out what they were thinking. Like, I think we had. The only one I can think of really was uh multi no well, multiverse has got fighting game. Uh, Splatoon three. Was it Splatoon? That's 3? what it was. <laughs> it was in the same category as Splatoon three. That's what I'm saying. That was That's multiplayer, what I'm right? Saying. How is that even a thing? And Sifu <laughs> was not Sifu was snubbed hard, but I think it's also because didn't Sifu come out like Hold on, was it was I'm trying to remember when did Sifu launch? Was it the beginning of the year or was it almost like nine months that Sifu had been out already? The problem with Sifu was it had to follow up God of War, I think. And yeah. it just couldn't. Not for nothing. Like they did an amazing <laughs> job on God of War. I'm a big God of War fan, but like from a non-biased perspective, Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn, that was it's all right. Horizon Zero Dawn was good. Um I think the biggest problem with Horizon Zero Dawn was it's just it lacked content. Wait, wasn't it Forbidden West? Because Zero Dawn was the first one, right? Yeah, Forbidden West. Yeah, Forbidden but West. It, just, was it lacked. One. It lacked so much from where Zero Dawn was really, really good and it was engaging and you had all of these different things you can do. And then when you got into Forbidden West, they basically just 
placed it in the Sahara Desert and was like, here, here's here's Zero Dawn with fucking desert. <laughs> Sorry, I said fucking. <laughs> but uh <laughs> you know, it's 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 crazy, you know. So, but I mean it honestly, and this is my thing, it, it should have gone just like this. God of War Ragnarok, Elden Ring, Horizon Forbidden West. Um, in that order. And I feel like people would probably still have a lot to say. A lot of the like people who dumped like copious amounts of money into Elden Ring probably wouldn't agree, but <laughs> I think in general too, uh the one thing I was really happy about that God of War won was when uh, Christopher Judge got to get the award oh, but he had the most amazing long-winded speech i don't think i've seen an award ceremony where they had that much air time to talk about what they were thankful for and well if you had the voice of the friggin gods wouldn't you want it to have air time like uh during the the panel that we had here on the channel watching it live and everything uh at first a lot of us were like oh this is amazing but like i was gripped all the way through it's like man this dude really cares about a video game he did like he's probably one of the most you know mainstream actors that actually gave a crap about a video game performance they did to, enough um, to talk about it well uh only one more only only one more um would 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 i would say would top that all right and some people might disagree Um, give me just one second. No worries, no worries. By the way, welcome solo, Ivy, Pally. I see you there in the wings. Uh, glad you made it out of the abyss. I hope your toe There's is okay. There's only one other actor that is a mainstream actor, in my opinion, that holds more respect and regard for a video game than any other voice actor and actor altogether, and that is Lance Reddick. Oh. Bro. R.I.P. He make, just recently passed away. Don't make me cry. Come on. <laughs> but he was Commander Zavala, and I'm not a Destiny guy, but he was filming John Wick and still doing voice lines for Destiny. I was a I was a Destiny guy for like seven years. I appreciated the crap out of that game series, and yeah. uh, Lance Reddick was also just a, a, an actor I absolutely loved. Anyways, because I first saw him <laughs> on. Uh, Fringe, which became one of my favorite sci-fi shows of all time, and Great I loved show. his character so much. Like his character was the reason I kept coming back. Like sometimes he was a helper, sometimes he was the antagonist, but like that man called it down the line as that character it was like that was beautiful. Plus, then when he did uh, the Toys R Us, uh, Toys R Toys R Me, baby. yeah, Toys R Me, <laughs> yeah. that like I didn't think at that time that man would get into a funny role, and it was like. <laughs> Wow. So okay. <laughs> you know what he used to tell his wife his favorite word was? What? Titties. <laughs> <laughs> and she absolutely hated it. <laughs> he would go on the red car and be like, hello, how are you doing? Titties. <laughs> he just have like that that grin of his. <laughs> 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 I think it's safe to say, yes, I agree with you on this one, just because of how much I love that actor and seeing him on the wire. Christopher as well. Judge, it's it's like now, hold on, kind of kind of going back to that. Christopher Judge is a great actor now. They're doing a live action God of War. Is he even in the running? He was. He didn't get the part. I didn't know who got the part. I can tell you who got the part. Um he was in the he was in the running. He didn't have the physique for it. Okay. That was his problem. He had the voice, he obviously, but he has the voice clearly, but he didn't possess the physique that was needed for that role. And there was someone else, very similar stature and build, that does with a fairly similar voice tone that he does. And his name is Jason Momoa. Oh. And you know, he will be playing. He will be playing Kratos in a live action God of War. I'm not. I'm not hating that. I'm not. I, I think I would watch. I'm gonna watch it. It's just, just, he has the tenacity and the grit behind it. Like it's gonna. It's gonna feel a lot like um, uh, when he played the Dothraki in Game of Thrones. It's gonna uh -huh. be very dark, very rigid, very rustic. 
Um, I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, I think it's going to be a series rather than a movie. So it's going to kind of like trickle similar to like what they did with the Witcher. Mm -hmm. So I look forward. I look forward to that. Now you watch the Witcher, right? Of course. How do you feel about this Hemsworth fella taking the place of Geralt? Like, it's it's just odd. I I get the main actor stepping down for whatever reason. I I can't remember, and I don't I don't care honestly. But like, oh, I could tell it, you, it's, it's just it's, the it's, fact he didn't step down. He was promised. Sorry to cut you off. He was promised a contract to do Superman, and then the guy who was running DC fired everybody. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember they they claim there's like another DC universe reboot from films again. It's and gonna that's, suck. Yeah, DC has been chasing Marvel's tail for the last ten years, and they've always fallen short because of consistency. I know we're jumping off points now, but like, it doesn't even matter. Yeah, DC movies versus Marvel movies. There's no comparison because the quality and consistency of the timelines, the storylines, and everything. Marvel has it because they had their stuff together, even though they had different directors for different films. They're like, it takes place in this universe, leading up to this big thing. DC can't even decide on the same batman every film so it's like you know <laughs> they they have no consistency uh and the reason they use different batmans is because they never they they really fell off they were doing so good until heath ledger died they were doing so good oh my god and another dot like hot take what do you think of the batman when he passed away when they brought in Bane and they brought up Tom Hardy, who yep. had to wear lifts in his shoes and all this cool shit, it was a great movie. But Christian Bale didn't want to be Batman anymore. They had finished up that version of that Batman. The beauty of the comics is, like, when there's a diversion in Marvel comics, it's usually the same person as a different identity. Yeah. Whereas in DC, it's the same name with a completely different backstory. Like, for example... Batman Beyond, Batman Forever, Batman this, Batman that, whatever. They're Batman all separate, laughs. different universes of Batman. So, like, the most recent one with Robert Pattinson, I don't agree with it, but it makes sense if you follow the Batman Beyond thing. He's more of a grungy, undertaken guy, right? Yeah. Still rich, still Bruce Wayne, but it's a different, you know, style. Then, and, you know, and then when you think of the Batmans who are, like, um, oh gosh, what is his name? I know it by heart. Guy who played Beetlejuice. Uh, God, I can't even remember that. Chat, who played Beetlejuice? Doc, the, Michael, Michael Keaton, Keaton. Thank you. Doc knew right away, my dude. Doc, you are something <laughs> special. Thank you. Uh, Michael Keaton, he wants to come back and do a Batman version as like the older Batman with the younger Batman and Robin thing. So that could be something in the future. I just feel like there's just no consistency. If they developed some consistency and they had something a little bit more, you know, tasteful or stringent or consistent, they may have something. But until, you know, the Justice League failed, Zack Snyder just can't accept the fact that no matter how many times you film a nine hour movie, it's going to suck in nine hours. It'll suck in nine minutes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, but what if we make it in black and white and unedited? It's guess what? <laughs> Still gonna suck. It's gonna suck, but longer. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I don't know how you feel on this, but like, I just thought Colin Farrell's transformation was pretty awesome. Like, I didn't, I couldn't tell it was him until I saw the credits at the end of the film. I was like, who do you play? And then I had to look it up. It's like, he was actually, no way. He was so the, the <laughs> amount of makeup he had to go through was insane. Right. You would have thought that they would have just hired. For lack of a better word, a fat actor. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been easier. It would have been easier and cheaper. <laughs> right? You don't have to hire 10 makeup artists to put a fat suit around freaking, you know, Colin Farrell. Poor guy. Probably sweat out 100 pounds a take. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. The dude's not, he's not a bigger guy, but he's, he's kind of yoked. Yeah. I thought it was impressive. Like, like that was, that was one of the hugest points to the film for me is like that's a big guy like they did some like it was unbelievable like even the way he acted i couldn't tell it was like him honestly like he did a good job acting in it and then like just changed his look completely like it's i watched crazy. it twice and the second time around i still couldn't tell his facial features <laughs> 
they just did such a, a good job, like just covering him up. I don't know why, but hear me out. Like, hear hear me out. I don't know why, but I want it to work. Can we get Arnold Schwarzenegger to come back and be Mister Freeze again? Because he's still jacked. <laughs> I mean, he's still why not? <laughs> but you know they have to hire a new director they have to hire a new cast they have to settle on who's going to be batman again and who they're going to pay to be batman again <laughs> if they were going to do another batman it was going to be like a more serious or rustic batman just get michael keaton bring michael keaton back and bring arnold schwarzenegger back and call it a day i mean i would say val kilmer but he can't speak poor guy oh um, dude that he, makes me he, cry. He, <laughs> well, I mean, he's alive. He just doesn't have. He, he's he had the this weird surgery with his throat. Like even in uh, Top Gun, when he came back in yeah. the second Top Gun, they AI'd his voice. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Like he actually was a part of developing that revolutionary software for people with yeah, those exactly. disabilities and stuff. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So like, yeah, it's it's super sad. Like he was he was pretty good as Batman too. Like, so no love for George Clooney. Uh, George Clooney was good. I feel like if there was like for the more eccentric Batman, if I had to choose between George Clooney and Val Kilmer, the only reason I will say Val Kilmer is because I really enjoyed the Riddler. Okay. Okay. What do you think of the and new Riddler from the bat the the Batman? I'd rather not. <laughs> Jim Carrey rolled like if he would have been dead, he rolled in his grave twice. Like. Oh, like it's you. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. They, that's the problem when you have people like Jim Carrey who take a role and he's a very method actor. So he gets into his ideal. You can't take someone like Jim Carrey, put him in a role and then 20 years later, try to recast the role to someone who's not Jim Carrey because it's not going to work. <laughs> So you're There's saying, no version of that happening. So you can't see another Ace Ventura. Not unless he's like the father. <laughs> the I'm, only other person that I can even potentially seeing as like a secondary Ace. I couldn't even. Hold on. Let me actually like <laughs> sit back and like really consider the options. He's it would to have to be one. Ryan Reynolds. Really? And I can't even picture Ryan Reynolds doing that kind of comedy. I don't think he could be that slapstick. I don't think he could be that that loose in, in comic value. I'm like, I know Deadpool was raunchy, but he's he's always done raunchy, you know. Like he's he's always had that edgy kind of comedy, but he's not he's not went to Jim Carrey lengths. I don't I don't think he ever if, would. Like even even thinking like the mask, like who could who could have done the mask better? You can't. There's no one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean yeah, that's so so I don't think there could be another race venture. <laughs> it's so hard. That's <laughs> and that's what makes him such a, a a a magnificent actor is like you know you're like so you know you're good when people like you, but you know you're great when no one else can do it but you. Right. <laughs> like when no one can take your place, you know you've made it. You know you're doing it right because there is no one else. <laughs> I totally agree is, with you on this. <laughs> that is a crazy concept. We've it, we've definitely digressed off the beaten path, but we sure it's, have. It's, it's 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 definitely crazy how uh, how the conversation evolves. But <clears throat> obviously, you're a man of media, right? You you love films, you love TV shows. Yeah, no, I love games, films, like uh, music, video games. Oh yeah, no, I'm very I'm very involved when I when when I take uh part in a part of entertainment whether it's streaming or music or media or film like i become invested i become obsessed with the idea with what it is like you know because just like what we're doing right now this isn't like um <clears throat> i had to explain it today to somebody on twitter it's a little side conversation but it's just my opinion um there was someone on twitter and i had i had to hit i had a massive raid um uh, a few days ago and i raided out um, and I rated out with a lot of people and they're like, well, how many of those people were actively chatting in your chat? And I'm like, oh, at least half of them. And they're like, wow. So only half of whoever was there was chatting. I'm like, yeah, but we're not in the conversation business. We're in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. And most people lose sight of that. 
Um, you know, I rated out like so I didn't get rated. I rated out. I rated out with 110 people. Um, and of those people, I like 50 people were chatting it up in the next stream. And someone asked, like, hey, like, are we, you know, why why weren't everyone talking? Like, because much like people anymore, like we have to understand, like, if we're on someone's TV, if we're on someone's computer, they're not there necessarily to engage with us. They're there watching us. We are broadcasting. So think about that for a second. Do you chat with your morning news crew in the morning when you watch your news? No. Do you chat with the actors as they're performing your Netflix show? No. You can comment on it to your friends, but just because you're not communicating directly into their chat doesn't mean you're not real. doesn't mean they're not there. It just means that you're providing entertainment at its best value, right? So the same thing applies. If someone isn't chatting, it doesn't mean they're not liking it. It means they're enjoying it for what it is. It's entertainment. It's supposed to be entertained. We're not in the conversation business. And I mean, even on an open floor like this, where it is a podcast, like how many podcasts offer a chat room? Not many. Yeah. But you have a platform where it is live and we can take live questions similar to a radio show. But then you have to think about the market and you have to think about the people that are here and things like that. There's a lot of other factors that play into that. But more or less, the whole point of that was to say this. uh, Don't be discouraged if your chat isn't moving because there's always someone watching. That's a beautiful sentiment to give. And, you know, um, we also talked earlier about this, but just kind of give an outline to our viewers here. Like, mm-hmm. what's the deal with Kick and what are your thoughts on it as a platform for streaming? Does it have the longevity? Does it have the ability to be somewhat of a competitor? Because in reality, it has to be a competitor from a business standpoint to be able to be viable for the partnerships and everything that they offer. I don't know much about it. This is why you're you're mainly here now, so we can have this conversation. So, you know, give us the rundown. Absolutely. That's so that's a great question. So, um, is Kick a competitor? Without a doubt, yes. Um, are there key differences? Yes. A hundred percent. And I'll kind of explain those to you. So we'll start with the obvious, what most people know, and then we'll get into kind of what most people don't know, um, what more is speculated on. So um, I'm not someone who talks to talk. If I say something, it's because it's a fact. Um, I won't give you guys and I won't air out information that I don't know myself unless otherwise proven to be something else. So Twitch is a great platform. They offer a 50-50 split. When you're a partner, guess what? It doesn't change. You're still only getting 50-50. On Twitch, you have ads. On Twitch, you have an ad incentive, which it's a joke. On Twitch, you have options to collaborate with creators. Oh, sorry. Hold on, I got a call. (coughs) There we go. Um, a couple of things that most people don't know. You can do all of those things on Kick. Twitch has a TOS, so does Kick. Twitch doesn't like follow for follow. T- Kick doesn't tolerate it either. It's written into their TOS. Oh, but you can do this and that on on Kick. No, you can't. You can't have sex live. You cannot expose yourself beyond what's considered paste nudity, same thing on Twitch. It's the, it's nearly a copy and paste of the the terms and services, but here are some things that you don't know about kick and you don't, you may not know about um, kick relating into Twitch. Discoverability is at the forefront of kick based off of the, the people that you follow and the channels that you watch, they're going to put those people into your recommended. Granted, you will always see one for gambling. Always. There'll always be at least one. That's because the site is backed by one of the largest gambling sites in the world known as Stake. It's a financially backed company. Fun fact, Stake has been backing Twitch for the last five years and $50 million. My goodness. Um, The main reason Stake has pulled out of uh, Twitch is because Twitch is now being backed by a poker company, which is why you're seeing more poker things come up on Twitch and more poker advertisements come up on Twitch. So it's uh, important to recognize that gambling isn't something to deter anyone from anything. It's a choice. You know, 
if you decide to gamble, you're making that choice as an adult. You're an adult. You make your own decisions. Um, when it comes to kick now from a more positive standpoint, discoverability integration is there. Um, they don't have channel points similar to Twitch yet. They do have subscriptions. Now, here's the biggest thing. In order to get affiliate on Twitch, what do you need? You need an average of three viewers. You need what? 50 followers and you need 12 days streamed. If I'm, if my, if I'm, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah. Somewhere, somewhere along those that. lines. In order to get affiliate on kick, you have to stream for five hours and you need 75 followers. So all they're asking for you is to network within your community and to just go live on the platform, essentially. Then you get access to a 95-5 split. Now, from what I've read, the 95-5 is staying for a minimum of three years. It is written into the TOS. Okay, very clear. It is written into the contract. So you know the expectation of it lasting um, at least three years is there, right? When Justin TV was Justin TV before Twitch was Twitch, they had a 70-30 split for partners, um, and it was 50-50 for affiliates, and that was just mainly mainly paying for the site, right? Things are a little bit different on how Kick maintains their site. There, There's no direct response that you can find that actually says this is how things are paid for. It's mostly led up to speculation, but I'm not here to check their business, you know, their, their business action plan. I just wanted to make sure that the platform is viable. And I'll tell you right now that it is. In the last six streams that I've done on Kick, I have accrued 500 followers. Now, let's put that in perspective. There's roughly 15,000 streamers right now on Kick in total across eight different languages and 12 countries, right? That is a lot of people, a lot of language, and a lot of, and a lot of different people you can meet. And it's early. The average daily stream on Twitch is over a million people live. That's a lot more to segue through. Now, not to say that there's not going to have big changes, but some, some notable mentions that are going to be changing is Kick has just secured some major partnerships with content creators such as Dr. Disrespect, Tfue, Courage JD, and Cypher PK. They're going to be at one point, they've 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 done soft announcements, but they're going to be making exclusivity, um, exclusive content only on kick in the coming months. Mm. So if that isn't a testament to the platform's viability, I'm not entirely sure what is. So I strongly advise anybody who's taking content creation seriously and streaming seriously, whether it's for monetary gain or not, it's not going to hurt. But also put this in perspective. The average streamer on Twitch averages 20 subs a month. The average streamer averages 20 subs a month. On Twitch, what does that translate to? $48, give or take? Yeah, if you're not counting all the other Twitch monetary incentives you gain yeah that, mm -hmm. that'd be about just that yep on kick that's about 150 dollars yeah so that's double that's that's so much and that's just like your same 20 people that come to your channel and they subscribe that's 20 subscribers right now with 150 more dollars a month let's put this in from a content perspective if you don't have the time to edit but you know that you can hire an editor to do $25 a video or $20 a video to help you do more TikTok, TikToks a month. And you have a nine to five job. So you're not concerned with the monetary gain. You just need something that can essentially, you're using your content to pay for your content. Why not? Now you're able to produce more content because you're making the, the same, you are the same subscribers you're making on Twitch. On Twitch, you're now making on Kick. And that money is now going towards you being able to create more content to and then create more audience and then make more money to make more content. And so it ensues. I know. And then the more that, you know, you engage and you create your audience, the more you can give away, the more you things you can host and things like that. It's important to really look at things from a broad perspective. Most people think with selfish intentions. Most people only will only think for themselves. 
if you're one of the few people that thinks proactively and as a community and being able to support one another, why not? Why stay where you're restricted? I've been on Twitch for three years, never left, ever. I've applied for partner twice. I've hit the partner requirements on Twitch twice. Two different times I was denied. It is what it is. If things keep going the way they're going, I'll be a kick partner within the month. A partner. Put that in perspective. Being able to translate three years of blood, sweat, and tears into a platform and being able to convert the majority of those people onto a new platform to grow. It's a no-brainer. Why hold yourself back where you can become more successful for doing exactly what you're doing here? Now, here's the law side. You're not going to have channel points. A lot of the API integrations are still new. The, the, it's still in beta. There's still a lot of things coming together. So you're going to have to be a little more inventive. You're going to have to be a little more engaging with your audience. But that's the, that's the price of being a creator. You know, some people just like to sit and watch. Some people like a little more engagement. So, but that's, that's my, that's my two cents. Now, did you have any questions on that? Uh, no, you actually uh, put everything out there. Great. I just wanted to kind of like, you know, see if you're on the same wavelength as me, as far as being <clears throat> a content creator, someone who's passionate about it, at least. Cause I can tell you have the passion. I've been doing it 10 years. I, there's so many ways I'm passionate about it. And just one thing I've learned. And like, I always want to impart to the audience is that like, to be somewhat successful in content creation, you can't put all your eggs in one basket. You have to be diverse. You have to have those TikToks like you mentioned. You have to invest in your YouTube. You have to invest in Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you can post photos and video and kind of just keep your audience fully connected with you at all times because that discoverability from all of those could lead you back to Twitch, back to Kick whatever you're doing. So it's like, I just definitely think that is uh, very important that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. And uh, Doc Place says, can I ask what is Kick doing to help content creators grow? And I think you touched on the discoverability algorithm kind of thing, right? So to kind of touch on that, <clears throat> two things. So um, content creation as a whole, um, yes, don't put all your eggs in one basket 100%. Now with that, don't ever expect an algorithm to pay you dividends. Um, I'll tell you what most people are scared to say. People cheat. It's very simple. Most people definitely. cheat. Whether they were big creators or they're small creators. People cheat. Um, there are a lot of people that I know personally that are bigger creators that have admitted to me that they spend upwards of five or $6,000 a month on buying views on TikTok. Wow. On buying followers on TikTok, paying for the TikTok promotion, paying for the Instagram promotion, um, all of those things are, uh, it's fake growth. And they do that so they can appeal to brands. And I strongly advise against it. If you're going to make content, do it for yourself. Um, there's plenty of times I posted the same video on TikTok, Facebook Reels, Instagram Reels, and YouTube. And YouTube does the best for YouTube shorts. Yeah. And there's plenty of videos that I do on TikTok that I do better on TikTok. Um, <clears throat> TikTok's not going to be around very much longer. I hope everyone's very much aware of that. Um, TikTok right now is undergoing um, the, the, the middle of, uh, they're in the middle of a big debacle, politic uh, not politically, but illegally, about the app doing malicious things on the outside looking in. So TikTok is getting ready to be banned permanently. And the instead of creators saying, oh, um, that's okay. You know, we have other platforms that we can negotiate on. A lot of other um, uh, creators are, you know, Cryberry shitty ass. They're, I can't believe they're going to get rid of TikTok. I just, I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, I built everything here. I'm going to have to stop working because I'm losing a platform. Why? You're going to stop working because you lost 200,000 of those fake followers. You're going to stop working because you're, you go live every single day on an application and you have 18 viewers of your 1.4 million followers. You have 18 viewers. Doesn't take a genius to figure out the math. You're going to have to work to make things work. It's very simple. 
And when people realize that TikTok is not the end all be all and that when it goes, it's okay. There are other platforms you can go live on. There are other platforms that are available and at our disposal to network with and multi-stream with. Um, TikTok's not making money. That's the thing. People think TikTok is profitable. You can look it up. It is public record. TikTok has been in the red since the day they started. That's why they're based out of Singapore. Also, yeah, um, Twitch doesn't... Uh, they didn't remove any kind of block on multi-streaming, technically, did they? There's like... You can't they do allow Facebook. you to multi-stream to Instagram and TikTok. That's yeah, it. yeah. So you you can't do Facebook, right? And then I don't. Nope. I think Kick being relatively new, they'll probably not allow that either, right? They're not allowing Kick as it's okay. a competitor. So they allow they allow what's called mobile app integration. So they allow you to go like live on on mobile or um, vertical um, forms. Okay. So that's why they don't allow you to go to YouTube and things like that. Whereas on Kick, there's no exclusivity clause. Also. So not only are you making that 95.5, but you can go live on Kick, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, whatever platform at the same time at any given time. Now, granted, I'm not taking advantage of that right now. It's something that I'm deeply looking into as I'm approaching YouTube partner as well. So as uh, as the things go longer, I'll be, you know, multi-streaming from Kick to to and kick in youtube those are gonna be my two you know main platforms going forward but as of right now i'm taking a step back from twitch until they make some changes because they just recently released a message from their ceo saying on uh, a backing up why they have to do 50 50 and they have to run ads well i'll give you a hint kick runs zero ads whether you're subbed or not subbed zero ads you get a, you get no sidebar ads no pop-ups nothing not one single advertisement. That is a huge difference. Do you think like uh, that's mainly because of the three-year contract? Mm -hmm. Will that be an ongoing thing or will they eventually do those integrations? Like in a realistic standpoint, how long they have of a to business be model? Can, yeah. How long can that be profitable until it's not? So it's to my understanding, um, and they haven't released a whole lot, but this is my understanding. Stake is what's the subsidiary and they get paid off of clicks into their site right accounts made and clicks into their site now kick is a subsidiary of stake so i'm assuming the clicks count now with that being said there are a lot of people that do the gambling like the big names like aiden ross train wrecks uh corinna Kampf, like they exclusively stream on stake and i think that's contracted so that they bring people in which is fine you know but I think because they're making so much money, like stake hasn't been more profitable than they've been in like the last five years. Like they're very profitable. They purchased their own F1 team. They're they're a major sponsor in F1. They're sponsoring NASCAR. They're sponsoring Kick. They're they're very much involved and they're very, very integrated. They're about to get involved in FIFA. So like they're oh, very, very well involved and they're very well diverse. I'm not seeing them going anywhere. You know, even with the 5% kickback, I don't think, you know, you got to think about it. 5% is still 5%, right? Think of 5% of a million, right? That's a lot of money. Granted, the creators are making money, but that's the whole purpose of kick. The whole purpose of kick is to give the creators the, the, the financial freedom to be able to make what they want to make, make their content, go to multiple platforms, do it with, do it ethically for the most part and have fun and not have to stress about a 50, 50 split or, you know, grinding. Like they have a partner program called the verified program. And is it a little bit easier to attain than Twitch? Yeah. It's basically the same thing as, as Twitch, except instead of it being 75, it's 50. It's not 75 viewers. It's 50 viewers. They don't want to gatekeep your success. They want you to earn it. That's it. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with setting attainable goals. And some people are like, well, it's, if it's so easy, you know, everyone's going to be verified. Like, that's the goal. People think of that as a bad thing. Imagine if everyone was getting over 50 viewers. That is insane to me. And a great standpoint, not in like a, a far-fetched standpoint. If you can average 50 viewers and you're able to cultivate a community where there aren't people sitting with one or two viewers, are you serious? 
That doesn't make it a bad thing. That makes it a good thing. There's no benefits to exclusivity. <laughs> and they see that. They the vision with them is beyond the the material. Nope. I see wheels turning. <laughs> Yeah, wheels are turning, but you know it's always nice to know the inside details about these things because you always think of the business model and like sometimes when it sounds too good to be true, usually it is, right? But you know, I like the idea, especially at the outset. You mentioned that for three years they mentioned this ninety-five-five split. That makes sense. That's a great expectation, and you know what you're getting up front. You you know that hey, it's eventually going to change. That ninety-five may become ninety well, or. Even if, even it will, it just says that's what, that's all they've promised so far. It's yeah. not to say that it will change. It's just to say that's all they've put into the work so far as, hey, this is what we're committing to. Let's see what happens. You think they wanted them launch a mobile app two weeks after the, the application came out or two weeks after the browser came out? No, they got a mobile app already, dude. They've got access to things that most companies don't get this quick and what's crazy is it runs good it's got bugs but the app runs faster than twitches yeah well that's fantastic honestly and hopefully you know there is a, a bright future for it to continue to grow and i don't have any doubts you know that this is just another great opportunity for content creators to be able to do something and as you guys can see on screen he is pulling up the app right now and it looks really good honestly like I love that little slideshow where you can see the current featured on there. And those are according to your taste and what you've played mm -hmm. on there, right? So like I watch a lot of Fortnite, right? Now watch this. Now you're seeing them play live as you're scrolling. Oh, I love that. That's like the, the YouTube app, how it does that preview before you actually click into it. This I love is them that. live though. This is live. I love that so much. These are all people that are live and it's seamless. I mean, there's a lot of great points to it, it looks like. But yeah, that's just another thing for content creators to jump into. And I guess a hot take from me is that, yeah, if you want to do it, do it. Like, I've seen so much division on this, and it's ridiculous. As much as I love Twitch and the opportunities it's given me, Instagram gave me opportunities. Uh, you know, posting on TikTok opened up doors. There were things about YouTube that helped. So it's like... Keep diversifying that portfolio, get the experience with these different parts of the industry. And you never know if you decide, hey, I'm going to throw it all back in the Twitch. There are going to be some people that are going to love you and come from that place over to this place and find that support. But, you know, I think that you just have to keep trying these different things. You can't just stay locked in the one forever because that's when you start suffering and that's when your growth as a personality and financially is where you're going to get stunted. No, I 100% I agree. Um, there's so much opportunity for growth out there. And this is a really hot take. Twitch holds you back. Think about it. Twitch is holding you back. They're saying you can only stream on our platform if you're live on our platform, unless you want to go to TikTok, right? And we all know how TikTok live is, right? So then... Now, if you want to go live on YouTube, you have to close your stream on, on Twitch, mm -hmm. re-put in your API for YouTube, plug in YouTube, go live, start all over again, remanage your hype, remanage your time, remanage the game, tell the people you're playing with, if you're playing with people like, hey, hold on a second, I've got to change over, <laughs> yeah. give me a second, versus hitting a foot pedal, muting and being, hey guys, hey, what's up everybody on YouTube, hey, what's up everybody on Kick, hey, what's up everybody on Facebook, how are we doing, it's your boy Dot. We're hanging out. We're going to get ready to do this. You want to chat it up? I'll see everyone's chatting here. You got any questions? Drop them in here. Boom. And you just dive in. Unmute. Talk to your people in, in your Discord. Like, it's, it's, bro, don't let, don't let people who, like, I'm, I'm, a, like, I was a Twitch head, bro. Twitch head, bro. Like, I was going to go to TwitchCon and all these things. And, and, and it's so eye opening to see the differences when, you're looking at people and the content that they make and the restrictiveness to it. It's where's the benefit? Even on YouTube, they have 70, 30, right? And they're, and they're owned by Google, mm -hmm. right? That's fine. Amazon is, if not one of the largest companies in the world, mm -hmm. why can't they offer 70, 30? 
Yeah, that makes. Want to know lot why? Of sense. Because then if they do it, the whole, everyone else is going to want to do it. Mm -hmm. They don't want to remain competitive. If they're not going to remain competitive, they're going to lose. And if Kick continues to do what they're going to do, Kick is going to rule the streaming world. Mark my words. Well, I definitely hope that the future stays bright for it and that, you know, there's no kind of issues along the way. But I'm I'm just happy in general that there is competition out there. I feel like competition is healthy for a content creation market. Absolutely. Like for the while for the longest time, Twitch felt stagnant because there was no no one going against them. Now this could change up. This could bring in at least something. I, I'm not going to hold out optimism that, yeah, that split's going to change, but maybe it, it will loosen them up on one other avenue, you know, and open up an opportunity to at least say, Hey, like, Oh, well, Twitch is trying something at least, but either way, it's just nice to have that competition. That way, you know, it gives each company somewhere to grow something different to do to set themselves apart and just kind of keep things fresh because as a content creator, you know how things can get so stagnant, you know, if there's no competition, if, if there's nowhere for you to grow, nowhere for you to, you know, try something new. If, if Twitch doesn't start getting competitive quick, they're going to get left behind. Yeah. It's a, it's already an oversaturated platform. It's like even the reach for this show is not possible compared to you know what some other content creators can achieve elsewhere so it's like mm -hmm. it's really tough having all the eggs in one basket as an organization but you know until there are different things that show proof that you know as an organization we'll be able to uh, do these different things we got to make the most of what we got and be thankful for what we got you know and not bite the, in the feed so to speak but Still, this could be great opportunities for organizations like Nemesis to be able to be like, hey, there might be something over here. Let's see if we can get some sort of team thing with Kick. And Kick will acknowledge Nemesis as a content creation team to feature that's on Kick. One of the, that, that's some of the next things coming. So some of the next things coming that they've released are something called Kicks, which is the equivalent to Bits. But what it is is it's basically Kick currency, and you get it just by watching other streamers. Hmm. So similarly, how you used to get bits just by watching other streamers, mm -hmm. now you're going to get something that's called kicks. Um, they're going to be rolling out um, more team involvement, so people who are verified will be able to have teams very similar to Twitch. Um, they'll be able to have a little more uh, searchability. You'll be able to add tags um, like you do on uh, Twitch. Like if you say you're like, like for example, it says RP and role play for hours, right? The majority of the ones on uh, Kick are all the same because it's still in beta. They're still learning, but they have all of the same key elements. They're just going about it better. They're executing better. So the more that they keep growing, remember, like for a beta application, they're already doing all of this right now. If that isn't a testament to the things that are coming, I don't know what is. That's fantastic. I'm excited, man, <laughs> for for it all. Honestly, it's it's really cool. I'm, I'm I'm all like when I tell you, man, like I'm all in. I'm all in green, baby. <laughs> well, you never know what 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 can happen for the future, and I'm glad we had this conversation about it too. It, it kind of like lowers that shroud of mystery for a lot of people who feel one way or another about this. And you know, as a content creator, it's just it's a fool's errand to be an elitist to one thing. So like, if, if anything, that's what I want viewers and aspiring streamers or already established content creators to think about. Like, do not stay in one lane. You have to diversify, you know? <laughs> it's, Highway's got a lot of lanes for a reason. Exactly, exactly. But even, there, even if you're in the slow lane, you're still going in the same direction. Most definitely. So... We've ran over time, but um, I want to give you some space to talk about what you got coming up and where people can find you. So run with that. And then I got one more thing after, but do your thing first. Just real quick. Find me at kick.com forward slash. It's just dot. That's where you can find me. You can find me on any other platform, but if you want to see me live, baby, that's where I'm going to be. Follow me on Twitter for every update. And if you need graphics, hit your boy up. I do it for a living. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much, dot. Uh, one more thing though. One more thing. 
because I, I got to be cringe on this now. And, and it feels like you're my guy for this. Are you my guy for this? Uh, well, I mean, we're about to find out. Okay. okay. Th this is going to look stupid for social posts, but we got to do this. I, I need your help, brother. Okay. What, are, do, you, are you, what do you need? I, I need, I need you to match my fist bump. Come on, come on, match the camera. Come on. Hold on. I don't know if it's this oh, way. Oh, a little bit, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait too far out, too far out. Boom. Okay. Hold, hold it, 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 hold it. I got it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I tried. I really tried. Beautiful. Beautiful. Cause I'm angles on, are crazy for fist bumps. I'm gonna be like, I just connected with this guy. Y'all fist bump from around the world and, and, you know, <laughs> made a new friend like, you know, beautiful. Around the world. I'm pretty sure we're in the same state. What? Nah. Yeah. Wait, NC, where are you from? baby. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm one state over, TN. Oh, yeah, no, you're still up. I'm Charlotte. Not that far away. Okay. Yeah, see? Oh, so, like, it's like, around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Heck, yeah. <laughs> but, all right, man, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, before Appreciate we all go, the Nem fam in the chat. We want to definitely uh, thank you yet again for being on the show and thank everybody for checking out our show. Come back, uh, like, Let's yet again. Thank you guys so much. We're going to get that raid started. We're going to give y'all the intro screen while that's happening. And just want to say that we love you and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.